Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. In this video I will show you how you can build this communication panel for your Boeing 737 pedestal. You will need the top, middle and bottom plate of the panel, as well as a black push button and a dual rotary encoder. Now after the panel is assembled, we will come to the configuration steps in Prosim and MobiFlight. I have had a very detailed live stream about configuring this COM panel. So in this video, I will only show the result of the configuration that I have done here. If you are interested in the detailed configuration and my thoughts about this, you can watch my live stream. I will go through this topic very detailed and you can see the development of the whole configuration. But if you're only interested in the result, then here you get everything in short. In MobiFlight, I have declared some new devices and you can find these here on the MobiFlight modules. And here I have my Arduino L, which I'm using for this COM panel and for other panels that will come in the future. You can see there are not too many devices declared. Five pieces here, the two buttons for the transfer and the test function of this panel here. We have the two encoders, the outer and inner encoder, and at the end, the seven segment displays or better saying the pins that control the max chips that are controlling the seven segment displays. In ProSim you can find everything you need here under config and configurations and in the combined config tab. And when we search for COM1 then you can see here in the navigation category we'll find everything we need. And we haven't uh, inserted too many offsets here this time. Only at the switches, there are two configurations for the uh, test COM1 pushed state, where we use an offset, and the transfer button pushed state. No more configurations are needed here in ProSim. And the reason for that can be found in the FSU IPC documentation. 
let's have a look at this. Here we have opened the document that shows us all the offsets that uh, FSU IPC uses in, I call this a standard. And we find here the active COM1 and COM2 frequency as well as the two standby frequencies. So we don't use an additional offset for ProSim to uh, giving us the uh, frequency because it is already there and FSUIPC is already transporting it in this offset in our case 05C4 for the active COM frequency and here 05CC for the standby frequencies. And these offsets are not only readable, they are also writable. And this gives us a chance if we are turning our encoder, then we don't have to use an offset to say prosim, hey, the encoder is moving, so do whatever you have to do. But we can execute a local function that is transforming the current value and writing it back into the offset. And so we don't need to use any other offsets here. And this is important. So whenever you can save an offset, then do it because you don't know when in the future of your corporate project, you will come in need for an individual and free offset. So let's stay at the frequencies. You can use these offsets we have seen right now here in the configuration for our displays. And I have done two configurations, L07 to 091. I have explained this in a last video to you. This is the naming of my display because it is using the pins 7, 8 and 9. And the number one here says that is the first display, so the active display. The same down here, 7 up to 9, because they are using the same pins. And the number two, because it is a second display, the standby display. Let's have a look inside of the configuration. In the SIM variable tab, you can see I'm using an FSUIPC offset. And this is exactly the offset we have seen just before in the FSUIPC document, 05C4, with a size of four bytes. On the display tab, I have connected this to my Arduino L, said that it is a display module and the name is again 07209. So I have used the same name for the device, which this is here. And I'm saying it's the first set of displays. All six numbers are used and the decimal point is at the third position. Nearly the same for the other configuration. The only difference is the offset. I'm using 05CC, which is the offset of the standby frequency. All other values are the same nearly because in the second configuration, we are controlling the second chip of the uh, display chip chain. Let's come to the input configurations now. And at first there we have the transfer button. The transfer button normally when you check the FSURPC offset documentation has also an offset uh, standard in FSURPC. But we have tested this in the live stream. This isn't working. I don't know why it isn't working. Maybe the documentation isn't right or we are using it wrong or in our setting with a prosim it isn't working. I don't know. But uh, we have used instead uh, individual offset. You have seen this in the prosim uh, configuration and this offset I have used here in my configuration. You can see 5321 is the offset I have used and the force of the bits is used to transmit the uh, state of this button. On press, like all other buttons, gives us a one and the on release gives us a zero. 
So with this configuration, we can transmit the transfer signal to Prosim. As you can see, the values of the both frequencies are already shown up on the displays. And when we press the transfer button, they switch the positions. Now let's come to the test button. And to understand these configurations, we have to exactly know what the test button is doing. When we press it, then there are zeros shown on our displays. But these zeros don't come from the offset. We have tested this in the live stream. When the zeros are showing up, then the offset still has the value of the frequency. So this zero don't come over the FSU IPC uh, SDK or something like this. Maybe it's a function that is handled inside of Prosum. I don't know. And so I simulate this here locally in MobiFlight. Now let's have a look at this configuration. The test button is my input configuration L01. And it is made like a normal button configuration with the individual offset. I have declared, I'm using the fourth byte here. And again, on press L1, on release L0. So this configuration here is only to transmit the value that this button is pushed to process. But we can have an eye on this uh, state of this button and use it internally. And for this, I have done an output configuration and given it the same name as the button configuration. Here you find the L01 var for variable. So I'm giving the var appendance to all these configurations that I'm using in other configurations so that I don't uh, delete them accidentally because I think I don't uh, use this here. Inside of this configuration, I'm looking to the same offset like before here, but I'm doing a comparison setting with it. And why do I do this? Let's have a look to the value of this configuration. You can see it here in the blue marking. When I press the button, the flight sim value is a 16. The 16 because I'm using the force bit here. If I would use another bit of the offset, then there would be a different value. I know if this value isn't zero, then the button is pressed. And because maybe in the future I will change this offset or if there is any reason to change this, I don't want to look exactly at the 16. And so I'm converting every number that is higher than zero to um, a number, a one. And so I can always look if this value is one, then the button is pressed. And this is what I'm doing here in the comparison tab here. If the current value is zero, then it can stay zero because the button isn't pressed. But else set it to one. So every other value is transformed into a one. And this you can see here on the right side, it is 16, but it comes a one out here. And when I release it, it is zero again, and the result is zero. And this variable configuration we are using in another configuration for the displays. You find this here. It is the test configuration. It has the same name uh, like the display for the active frequency, but uh, with test written behind because the test button is pushed. And inside here, the offset doesn't matter. I'm just doing a transformation here and inserting a zero. So this configuration will always bring a zero out on the display. But, and you can see this in my live stream too, if we would now activate this configuration, then it would be in conflict with the normal 
active standby frequency configuration. The normal configuration will show the value of the active frequency. And this configuration here will show zeros. So the display will flicker really fast from a real number to the zeros. So we have to define exactly when there is the moment that the two configurations can be active. And this we will do with our observer variable that we have done right now. And here in the precondition tab, we will use it. So I have declared this precondition with a type of a config item, a config item that we have uh, declared right before the L01 var. If this value is one, the button is pressed, then this test configuration can be active. The other way you can find in the normal active standby configuration. Here in the precondition tab, you see we are also looking to the 01 var. And if the value is zero, then this configuration will be active. So only if the button isn't pressed, this configuration uh, can be shown. And so there isn't a flicker anymore because they know the moment when every of this configuration can be activated. The last configuration on the list are the two encoders. And these can be found in the input tab. And down here, I have made two configurations, 0, 03 to 0, 04 and 0, 05 to 0, 06. Again, these are the pins that the two encoders are using. Let's have a look first at the outer encoder, which is responsible to increase or decrease the value in front of the decimal point. So when you would see the whole number as one number, then it would add or subtract 1000 from this number. Let's have a look to the FSU IPC documentation first. As I have said, we are using these offsets from the documentation. These offsets have a length of four bytes. So we are dealing here with a very big number. Remember, we don't want to send the turning signal of the encoder, but we want to calculate the new value that we have to write into the offset by ourselves. And with such a big number, all values that we calculate with would be very big. So I will make this number a little bit smaller first. And this I'm doing with another configuration. You find this here in the output tab and I'm calling this up here the COM1 standby. And at the end here, you can already see what this configuration does. It reads the value that comes from the flight sim. Here in the first column, you can see the long number. And in the second column, you can see what comes out after we have done something with it. We have shortened this number here by three zeros. And how we can do this, you can see here in the sim variable tab, it reads the offset and then transform it and divides it by 1000. And so the last three digits will fall away. Back here in the input tab and at the configuration of our outer encoder, I'm using this configuration in the config references tab. Here you can see the COM1 standby configuration is used and I can call it when I'm using the hashtag sign. So in the input tab, you can see I'm using the same offset before and when I turn the encoder left, so I'm in the on left tab, I'm doing this formula here. We have to make sure that the value in front of the decimal point stays between 118 and 136. So this is the range where we have to stay inside. And the formula can guarantee this. So if our value 
is bigger or equal 119,000. This is the value when we see the number as one big number here, then we can still subtract 1000 from our value because then we would be at 118,000. If it is 118,000, then we shouldn't do this because we would fall down to 117,000 and this would be too low. So the other case, if we can't subtract 1000 again, then we have to jump up to 136,000. And this we can make when we add 18,000 to our value. And now we have to write this value back into our offset. And because we have removed the three zeros at the end, we now have to add them again. And this we will do by multiplying the whole value with 1000. Another calculation has to be done on the on right tab. Here we have to make sure that we don't overshoot the 136,000. So if our value is lower than 136,000, then we can still add 1000 to our value. And in the other case, we have to make a jump down to 118. And this we can achieve if we are subtracting 18,000 from our value. And again, multiplying the whole value with 1000. Now let's have a look to the configuration of the inner encoder, which affects everything behind the decimal point and only behind. So uh, when we go lower and lower and we are here at three zeros behind the decimal point, then we have to start again from the highest value 975 behind the decimal point. And nearly the same when we are turning right. So increasing the value and are at 975, then we have to fall back down to zero. So how can we achieve this? We are using the same offset here, but a different calculation here. So when we turn left, if our value modulo 1000 is zero. So what does this mean? We have to look only at the last three digits of our value. And the modulo operator, you know this already, uh, divides the value by the given number here, divided through uh, 1000. And the result of this calculation is the rest that stays when we divide it through 3000. And this will always be the last three digits. So if this rest is zero, then the last three digits are zero. And then we can't go anymore to the left, lower the value. We have to jump back up to 975. And this we are doing here by adding this value to our value. In the other case, we can still subtract 25 from our value. So this is the step size. Every turn lowers this value. And again, multiplying it with 1000 for making the number bigger again and write it back to the offset. And on write, the formula is a little bit more complicated. So the beginning, you know already, if our value modulo 1000 is zero, so we are at the lowest point, then we can add 25, right? We can go up. Otherwise, if we would add 25 to our value and check the modulo 1000 and the rest is zero, then we would be at 975. And the next right rotation has to bring us back down to zero. Then we are at 975. And when we subtract this value from our value, then we fall down back to zero. So and otherwise, if we aren't at this critical point, then we can still add 25 to our value and multiply it with 1000 at the end. So now we can test this encoder here 
and starting with the outer encoder, turning right increases the value and when we come to 136 then the next turn brings us down to the 118 and so the other way down to 118 and another turn down brings us up to 136 and the numbers behind the decimal point here we are lowering it lower lower and lower and now we come to zero and the next lowering brings us up to 975 again and the other way around we fall down to zero and we can switch the values everything works as expected so the configuration is finished Both panel segments are in place and the left and right side is finished. Yes, that's the advantage when you have a part in your cockpit where both sides are nearly identical. Four last segments are open, including the fire panel here with some really tricky designs, I think. So I shouldn't lose much time now. And you can also save a lot of time when you become a member of my website where you find all the needed files to cut out and engrave or 3D print these panels here, including all the knobs that belong to the panel. So I have to move on now to the next section. And if you don't want to miss this upcoming episode, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see you soon back on the flight deck.